next video is a collaboration with programming knowledge. In this video, we'll solve a very popular pro problem that has been asked in several FANG uh, interviews, uh, which deals with arrays and how uh, arrays work. So in this video, we'll actually see how we can go about solving remove duplicates from solid array. And we'll do it uh, in a way which is a bit different from the conventional method. So uh, while we are solving this problem, we'll also talk about uh, how we can use the process and how we can uh, form a process which actually uh, tries its best to mimic the interview scenario, which uh, you usually have in a typical uh, whiteboarding software engineering interview. So uh, first, let's start with some very, very uh, simple basics. So lead code uh, is a place where you can practice uh, problems uh, for uh, your interviews uh, for any software engineering job. Uh, it doesn't have to be software engineering in general. It can be a back-end position, a front-end position, uh, anything which asks you about the basics of data structures and algorithms. It also includes uh, topics such as uh, system design, operating systems, databases. But the main focus of the website and the most popularly it's known for uh, practicing data structures and algorithms. So in this video and in the coming next videos of this playlist, we'll actually solve some very famous uh, top interview questions. And we'll see how we can actually uh, form a process where we'll learn uh, how to solve them and also how to do it in a way uh, such that it mimics the right interview setting and you'll have much more uh, you'll, you'll be very comfortable uh, doing this uh, in the interview as you do it in your practice session as well so uh, let's get started so before we jump on to anything uh, i really 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 encourage you to uh, pause the video uh, please uh, try this problem by yourself and only if you're not able to do it then return back to this video and watch the solution because I'll be explaining the solution in this video and uh, if you are not sure about how to start and if you have some uh, doubts and some uh, problems with uh, if you're confused and uh, intimidated by way to start and how to do it don't worry uh, I have a video on how to use lead code effectively which can solve which can at least answer a few of the problems which you are uh, facing and uh, trust me because uh, me and a lot of my colleagues currently have also um, struggled with the same problems and we have found really, really nice articles and uh, posts and advice from uh, seniors around all across the world and we have actually consolidated that into a single video and the link for that video will be in the description which is how to use lead code effectively so let's start uh, by reading the question first so this is how i usually uh, face or tackle a problem. So first, let's read the question out loud. So given a sorted array nums, remove the duplicates in place. So this is our keyword here in place, such that each element appears only once and returns the new length. So we have a sorted array nums and we want to re remove duplicates uh, in place so that uh, so we, we cannot uh, create another array. So we have that right here. And let's keep reading it first. So do not allocate any extra space for another array. You must do this by modifying the input array in place with O1 extra memory. So the question says that you have uh, an array nums, uh, which is sorted, uh, again, a very important key uh, point here. And we have to remove the duplicates and in place so that you know we don't allocate uh, an extra memory. So we the max memory which we can have is O of 1 and not O of n or uh, anything more than that. And we have to make sure that we remove the duplicate in such a way that uh, all the elements inside the array is unique. And then we return the new length after we remove all the duplicates. So clarification, uh, consider why the, confuse why the return value is an integer, but your answer is an array. So this is something which uh, lead code is doing behind the scenes. So you, just, you can just read this to understand how the code works, but uh, it's not, 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 nothing that affects your uh, solution or affects the way you think for the solution. So I'll be leaving this, but you can just read it if you want to understand how lead code works behind the scenes. So let's see the test cases once. So we have one, which is one, one, two. And then uh, as you would expect, the output is two because one is a duplicate here. So we remove that or we sh or it's shown as, it's, as if it's removed and the new length two is returned where nums is one and two. So the explanation is that your function should return length two. Uh, with the first two elements of the nums being one and two respectively, it doesn't matter what you leave beyond the return length. So again, very important, doesn't matter what you leave beyond the return length. So that means uh, uh, apart from all the unique elements, we can actually shift all the duplicates to the end or uh, shift them to 
something beyond the return length, something to keep in mind of, something which you have to have in your mind when you're reading the question as well. So the next is an again, a typical uh, test case, which is uh, having a lot of uh, duplicate numbers inside the array. And uh, the unique ones are only 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you have the output as 5, nums equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, the same uh, explanation. So now, uh, what do we know about the question? What are the key points about the question? So first, uh, what is the agenda? The agenda is that you have given a sorted array. Uh, you want to remove the duplicates in place. And you have to return the new length, which only exists of unique elements. And the constraints that we have is that you cannot, uh, the only memory you can use is O of 1. And the length of nums can be anything from minus 10 power 4 to 10 power 4. So make sure that, you know, uh, it's from minus 10 power 4. So it can also have negative elements inside your array. But that shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem because you're not having any uh, additions or subtractions or anything of like that sort uh, uh, doing in our uh, array. So yeah, and the most important thing is that num is sorted in an ascending order. So uh, again, uh, please pause the video and try to solve the solution by yourself. Uh, it's completely fine if you're not able to do it in your first try. Uh, uh, easy doesn't mean that you should be able to solve them in uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. But make sure that you uh, set a timer. Uh, so every typical interview uh, is usually uh, up to an hour max. But for easy questions, it's about 20, 30 minutes max where you discuss the solution, write the pseudocode and you're done with the question. So uh, whenever you're trying a simple question, make sure that you have a timer ready. Uh, it's a uh, habit, so you need to develop that habit. Have a timer for every question, uh, 20 minutes max, because that is how a general easy question should be solved in. And try to think of the solution, write down the solution in a piece of paper and code it up in 20 minutes. Might be difficult, might be really hard, but uh, as you keep doing this and trying this, you should be able to uh, make it in less than 20 minutes. And that is when you can actually advance to the medium questions. So uh, let's see what we can do here. So uh, we have an array and we know that we have to uh, do everything in place. So we have some constraints and we need to work with that constraint. So one is that it has to be in place. So you cannot uh, make another array, but you can play with the elements inside the array. So let's actually play with them. So uh, the first thing which comes in your mind uh, when you're solving an interview set of question is that always start with a brute force solution. So uh, you don't always have to start with the most optimal uh, solution. Start with the brute force solution because you then have at least one solution out there to your interviewer, right? Uh, and then you can actually uh, 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 actually think on top of that brute force solution and then uh, communicate what you feel will be the most optimal solution. So first think of a brute force solution and here a brute force solution can be anything. So uh, when you think of a brute force solution, don't worry about the constraints. Just talk about it. Just don't uh, start coding a brute force solution. Just talk about it. You can uh, we can actually use a set here. So if you don't think about the constraints, uh, actually just uh, convert this into a set, and the set will actually give you all the unique elements. Or, or something which you can also do is uh, have a map, a hash map, where you store all the unique elements as your key and the count as the value, and then only print the keys. So very uh, a lot of brute force solutions are there and just talk about it with your interview that you know this can be the most brute force way to do it but uh, since we have these constraints let's be, we then start to think about the constraints uh, another thing which can happen during the interview is that uh, the interviewer might not tell you about this uh, in the beginning of the interview he might only tell you about this and not and also uh, leave out the in place uh, keyword in your question so uh, the interview usually do that because they like to leave a bit of ambiguity in the question so that, you know, uh, they want to test whether you actually uh, assume information when you're solving a problem or do you actually ask questions. So the interview actually wants you to ask questions, wants you to uh, clarify uh, what the question is about, what the constraints are and think about every possible scenario because in the actual real job, you will be collaborating with a set of people, you will be talking to your manager, you will be talking to your colleagues and you will be working on things collaboratively and that is when uh, you want to work on something together, you will be asking questions, you will be uh, working together. So you, you need to make sure that you do not make assumptions when you're actually solving a problem. So if your interview only gives you this piece of information, you can just start with the brute force solution and then uh, you can just ask the interviewer 
uh, is there any constraints here? Can I do it in O of n or do you want it in less than that? Can I use extra memory? Uh, what is the maximum amount of numbers that can be there inside the array? So keep asking those questions. What can be the maximum length of the array? Keep asking those questions so that uh, the interviewer knows that you know, you're trying to actually think hard and critically about the problem covering all possible edge cases, which is very crucial during an interview because uh, you need to communicate what you're thinking because that is what the job is going to be. You will be talking and communicating uh, with your colleagues and your manager about solving problems together. So an interview is just basically a conversation where you and the interviewer are actually trying to solve a problem together, but it's not really together because you know you will be doing most of the work, but uh, you can think of the interviewer as a senior who is trying to help you solve that problem. So uh, think of the interviewer as your senior and Keep asking questions about how to solve it, uh, not the answer, but you know, what kind of edge cases am I looking for? Uh, can I do this? Can I do that? Is this possible? Uh, is it in place? Uh, can I modify the array completely? Can I make a duplicate of the array? Keep asking questions. And then once you think that you have enough uh, material knowledge to actually start working on the question, go ahead and start thinking about it. And again, talk about it. So uh, what comes to my mind uh, when seeing this is that, we need to skip duplicates. So since we're doing it in place, what we can do is skip duplicates and only keep track of the numbers which are changing. So uh, we need to do two things here. We need to skip duplicates and also keep track of the unique elements. So the first thing which comes to my mind is something called as a two pointer technique, where you have a, a, a single pointer which keeps tracks of the, all the unique numbers and you have uh, another pointer which actually uh, scans the array and skips all the duplicates and tells you what uh, the actual uh, unique numbers are. So how would uh, you approach this? So since the array is already sorted, uh, we can keep two pointers i and j where you know i is the slow runner uh, and j is the fast runner. So this is something which uh, a two pointer technique has a slow and a fast runner. Uh, so uh, as long as uh, nums of i is equal to nums of j, so as long as the slow pointer is equal to the fast pointer, uh, that means that uh, it contain it's a duplicate uh, since you know it's equal. So all you have to do is increment j, the fast pointer, and to skip the duplicate. Now, when we uh, encounter a situation where nums of i is not equal to nums of j, where you know the duplicate has ended and we have en en encountered a new unique number, that is when you actually copy the value of nums j. Uh, which is you know the new number which you found after the duplicate and copy its value to the next value of i which is i plus one because i currently contains the unique value still that time and you're adding a new unique value to your unique set of elements so when you encounter uh, nums of i not equal to nums of j or you know when you encounter a new element the duplicate run has ended so copy its value copy the value in nums of j to i plus one or basically uh, uh, increase the set of unique elements you have, which is being keep, which you're keeping track with i. And uh, again, you repeat the same process until j has reached the end of the i. So let's uh, code this up. Uh, uh, please, please, please make sure that you write the code in a piece of paper before you write it on the uh, compiler here, uh, the editor here, because uh, in the real setting, you will be working on a whiteboard. Uh, sometimes a laptop, but usually a whiteboard or a Google Doc. So you need to have uh, some practice with writing code with a piece of on a, on a piece of paper uh, with a pen. Uh, trust me, it's not the same as writing it on an editor uh, or using a keyboard. It's much different, and you need to be comfortable writing code with pen and pa pen and a paper. It it will be pseudo code, not uh, something which you know you can readily run. But if the uh, uh, interviewer asks you to write code which you know can be run, make sure that you're able to do that as well. So let's let's start. So first we need to handle uh, an edge case. So let's see the constraints. Uh, as you can see, the nums length can also be zero. So what to do? What do we return when the nums length is zero? So when the length is zero, we just return zero because there are no unique elements inside it. So if nums dot size equal to zero, all you have to do is return zero. Great, we have done that. Next, let's have our slow and fast pointers. So first we have a slow pointer, uh, which is at this beginning, i, and we have a fast pointer. So let's start the pointer with a for loop. So int j equal to one. So we have a fast pointer, which is uh, uh, already ahead of our slow pointer. j less than nums dot size 
J plus plus. Now uh, uh, let's uh, see what we had discussed. Let's actually implement that. So if nums of i not equal to nums of j, what do we do? So this is when we have encountered a duplicate, and now we want to copy the value of nums of j because you know that's a unique number, and increase our uh, set of unique elements tracked by i. So since we want to increase the element, increase the number of unique elements, we do i plus plus. And then what we do is a nums of i equal to nums of j. And that is how you actually uh, add a new element to your unique set of elements. And now this is done. Uh, we reach the end. And all you have to do is return i plus 1 because, you know, zero index. So you have to make sure that the length is one, in, one indexed. And we return i plus 1. And that is the actual length of all the unique elements. Now, uh, until this, everything is good. The solution looks good. Uh, we have handled the edge case. We have a slow point and a fast pointer. Usually the uh, usually the variable name i and j work for uh, slow and fast pointers. So make sure that you know it's completely fine. But if you want to just write this as you know a slow pointer and that one as a fast pointer because you know it's uh, the readability is again uh, something which interviewers like. But for uh, uh, pointer two pointer methods, i and j also work. So once you encounter a unique element, you increase your uh, set of unique elements, copy it to your set of unique elements, and increment j and i. Now, another way to write it, another uh, smoother or a cleaner way to write this would be to just use pre-increments. Pre so you just do a plus plus i here, and you're good to go. It does the same thing, and you're good to go now. So let's run this and see what happens. and accept it. So now we just have to click on submit. And success. So we were able to solve it with faster than 45% of CBO submissions. That is completely fine. So yeah, this is how you solve the question remove duplicates from solid array. Uh, and yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.